Bill O'Reilly here, Wednesday, April 27th, 2022. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening today in America. Home prices explode across the country. Germany sends heavy weapons to Ukraine. Harvard pays millions to repent for slavery. The FDA considers COVID boosters for little kids. Also ahead, Vice President Harris continues to have a lot of trouble. Why? But first, the cost of a typical home in the USA jumping 20% last month. The biggest increase in 34 years. Hottest housing markets include Charlotte and Raleigh, North Carolina, San Antonio, Texas, Jacksonville, Florida, but number one, Tampa, Florida. First-time buyers credit the housing boom on high-paying jobs. Germany sending heavy weapons into Ukraine. The equipment includes anti-aircraft missiles, tanks, even drones. Berlin originally refused to arm Ukrainians after Russia lost its invasion in February, agreeing only to humanitarian aid. Germany has a long-standing tradition of not supplying lethal weapons since the end of World War II. The country now investing more money into its military overall because it fears Putin. Harvard University creating a $300 million fund to atone for the school's historic ties to slavery. The administration releasing a statement, quote, slavery and its legacy have been a party of American life for 400 years. Harvard benefited from practices that were profoundly immoral, unquote. The university, the oldest in the country, was established in 1686. A review found some school teachers at Harvard did hold slaves throughout the 18th century. Pfizer asking the FDA to authorize a third COVID shot for children between the ages of 5 and 11. A booster has already been approved for Americans over age 18 and a second booster for senior citizens. The pandemic slowly returning in the Northeast and Texas, however, overall infection rates are down 97% compared to four months ago. In a moment, Kamala Harris not doing well. Why? Right back. Supply chain issues have been a catalyst to bring high-tech manufacturing back to the USA. My tech guy, the founder of Brownstone Research, calls it the great recalibration and discusses it in his new newsletter, Near Future Report. For 35 years, Jeff Brown has helped his subscribers safely navigate volatile times to preserve and grow wealth. He also answers your most pressing questions like how to protect your retirement from inflation. What are the implications of a new digital currency and the Great Reset? What will the Fed do with interest rates? And what's going to happen in the stock market this year? Brownstone Research has been at the forefront of major market moves for 35 years. Let Jeff help you by signing up for his newsletter today at a 75% discount. A 12-month subscription, only $49. So please go to Jeff Brown Tech. Com. JeffBrownTech.com, JeffBrownTech.com. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day, the problem with Kamala. The vice president is having a very hard time. In fact, she even got COVID this week. We wish her a fast recovery. But COVID is not as bad as her polling numbers. The Economist 39% approve, 48% disapprove of Ms. Harris. Trafalgar, 29% approve, 63% disapprove. And the average of the major national polls, 32% approving of the vice president, 58% disapproving. Here's a brief biography of Kamala Harris. She served as Attorney General of California between 2010 and 14. Then she was elected senator from the Golden State. She had the most liberal voting record 
during her short time in the Senate. Then she ran for president, and she got less than 2% of the primary vote. Nevertheless, Joe Biden selected Kamala Harris as his running mate, and some believe it was because of her gender and skin color. That is, of course, speculation. Well, now, Ms. Harris is in trouble. She cannot keep staff. Last week, her chief of staff, Tina Flournoy, quit. Ms. Flournoy is the 12th member of Ms. Harris' senior staff to leave. That may be a record in 15 months. Now, it's not fair to speculate why all these people are leaving. However, many critics of Ms. Harris, including an article written in Political Magazine, reports the vice president's office is, quote, dis functional. A quote from that article, people are thrown under the bus from the very top. There are short fuses. It is an abusive environment, unquote. Again, that's an anonymous thing from Politico, so keep that in mind. Now, we are scrutinizing Kamala Harris. As you know, she was appointed border czar in March 2021. Well, the board is a disaster. She's done nothing. In January 22, the vice president compared the January 6th Capitol riot to 9-11 in Pearl Harbor. That brought a lot of criticism upon her. The essential problem, I believe, is that Vice President Harris is not experienced enough to do her job. It's as simple as that. She's an ideologue with a poor Senate history. In short, she doesn't know enough about the country and the world to execute her duties as vice president. Again, that is my opinion. In California, it didn't matter. Politicians there are all ideologues. But the vice presidency, a different story. I'm Bill O'Reilly. I approve the message by writing it. If you'd like more honest news analysis, please visit BillOReilly.com. Also, my new book, Killing the Killers, The Secret War Against Terrorists, will be out on May 3rd, next Tuesday. I hope you check that out. In a moment, something you might not know. Car Shield is a good product. They make it easy and affordable to protect your car from expensive repairs. Car Shield offers protection plans for around 100 bucks a month and covers more parts than ever before. When you need a repair, you choose the mechanic and Car Shield handles the rest. Car Shield also includes coast to coast roadside assistance, rental car options, and trip reimbursement at no extra cost. Car Shield has helped millions of drivers. I am a member. And you can lock in a good price now. It will never go up if you do. Be protected from the rising cost of parts and repairs. Please go to carshield.com slash bill or call 800-391-8888 to save 10% on your plan and lock in your rate forever. That's carshield.com slash bill or 800-391-8888 to save 10%. A deductible may apply. Now, the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. 161 years ago today, President Abraham Lincoln officially suspended the writ of habeas corpus, allowing the Union Army to arrest anyone suspected of supporting the Confederacy. Here is the story. Habeas corpus dates back to the 12th century. In Latin, it translates to, you shall have the body. That means that any person detained must be given due process, a lawyer, a charge, an ability to defend in a reasonable amount of time. That's habeas corpus. Well, two weeks after the Civil War began, many in Washington feared that more states would leave the Union. Although Maryland did not secede, Southern sympathies were widespread there. To quell any potential rebellion, Lincoln suspended habeas corpus to give the military power.
power to silence dissenters. Under the order, commanders could detain individuals considered a threat to soldiers or civilians. Those arrested would be held without indictment or arraignment for as long as the army wanted. Abraham Lincoln's decision was challenged one month after he issued the order. The Chief Justice of the Supreme Court ruled a sitting commander-in-chief, that was Lincoln, did not have the authority to hold Americans indefinitely, even rebels. But Lincoln ignored that Supreme Court order, and he could because he had the power of the military behind him. Constitutional scholars still debate the issue. Even Lincoln himself was unsure about the legality of his decision, but it held until the end of the Civil War. And here's something else you might not know. Lincoln wasn't the only president to suspend habeas corpus. Other examples, U.S. Grant and his crackdown on the KKK, FDR's forced internment of Japanese Americans during World War II, and George W. Bush's detention of terror suspects after the September 11th attacks. For more incredible stories about the struggle to save the Union, please check out my book, Killing Lincoln. Back after this. As you know, inflation is almost out of control thanks to the policies of this administration. Retirement accounts are especially vulnerable right now. Because when inflation goes up, your dollar savings go down. So how do you protect your hard-earned wealth? Please call the people I trust at American Hartford Gold. They will show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts against inflation by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver, and they make it easy. They are the highest rated firm in the country with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. All it takes is a quick call and they will deliver physical gold and silver right to your door or put inside your IRA or 401k. Plus, tell them O'Reilly sent you, and they'll give you up to $1,500 of free silver on your first order. So please don't wait. 877-444-GOLD-GOLD. Or text GOLD to 65532. Again, 877-444-GOLD or text GOLD to 65532. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly. No spin, just facts, and always looking out for you.